Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. We made it to fr Oh my god, my pink is so much brighter than what you guys are doing over here. Okay. Friday is here. It's so run it back. It's FanDuel TV. Um, Even your shoes are pink today. Check this out. Ooh. Straight Barbie. Ooh. Bing bong. Uh, I was so excited for show this game shoes, yesterday. Yeah, it. show your shoes. Oh, God. I can't get up that That's high. Disgusting. You Spot are. me? <laughs> Spot me. I'm not spotting me. you. <laughs> no, I don't want to see that. Uh, the game happened. It happened. I mean, I don't know how else to say that. And the Celtics. I look like a fool. Mavericks no, I yeah, looked you silly. Know, I'm glad you said it, dude. I know. Shams was so. at the game, and so now I'm kind of curious to hear like the vibes inside the building. We'll get to that. what we're gonna get to that in a second. Um, but yeah, this was ugly. It was double digits. It, there was a 21 point lead at half, which is when I thought this is not gonna work. <laughs> Mavericks did make it a little interesting in the third. They got to within eight, uh, and then it was over. Porzingis had 20. He clearly feels fine. He was 20 minutes off, 21 minutes off the bench. Tatum was 16, Brown with 20. Luca did have 30, but Kyrie, all eyes on, had 12 points. Um, the beauty of it, Chandler, is probably this wasn't a one player situation for Boston. I would imagine that's best case scenario but worst for the Dallas Mavericks. Do they have a chance after what you saw yesterday? Well, the Celtics have folded in game two before. They did it against Miami, True. they did it against Cleveland. So yeah, this is at the end of the day, this is just one game. There's no reason to panic if you're Dallas. There's definitely a lot of areas that they have to clean up. Their defense was pretty bad, man. There was atrocious. There was, they had basically just pick on Luka, pick on Kyrie, whoever got a switch. Put your head down and drive. Make them foul you, make them stay in front of you. And there was just layup to dunk after dunk to to draw two, kick to a wide open three. Uh, it, it was really bad. So they have to clean that up. They, and, and then on the offensive end, they obviously didn't score many points. They got good looks. I can't complain about Kyrie's looks. He just missed a couple of bunnies. Luca was doing his thing, getting guys involved. They just didn't make shots. So I think there's definitely a lot of things they can clean up. But this was such a good balanced Man. attack from Boston. Porzingis was unbelievable immediately. It's like as soon as he got in the game, it was a game changer, and I loved when he when he first walked on the court. You could see he's so excited. Like the crowd oh, he's literally winking got at to people. Him. He was hype, <laughs> and and his his contribution last night was undeniable, blocking shots. So so it's it's going to be a tall task. We knew uh -oh. that before. There it was. Boston we is didn't. just Boston is just a better team. They they, they match up too well. Um, they play both ends of the floor very, very well. So they showed that last night, and this was an ass whooping. I mean, for real, Lou. Like, this wasn't even fun. Yeah, it was a, a dominant performance. I, I'm glad that we could see this, and we can kind of put all of these things behind <laughs> us that we've been trying to say about Boston. One thing we can agree on, if there's going to be one game they've showed that it's going to be game two, that's been their Achilles heel. But they've also looked like a well-oiled machine last night. This is a dominant performance from top to bottom. I think they had a great game plan. They went out and executed it, and they got a big win. They, they made Dallas look like they haven't been the team that they've been throughout the postseason. Right. They made them look like they weren't supposed to be there last night. And this is what you want to see from the team that's been 14 games better than everybody all season long, who's been dominant in the postseason throughout the postseason and we've said you know they don't have killer instinct they don't have this and that well that let's put all at the rest let's put all at the bed this is a dominant performance from top to bottom they got six guys in double digits <laughs> almost shot 50 percent from the field and i'm only talking about offense defensively they were amazing take they were taking away the lob look took away some of the things that made dallas successful all, all year long and and like i said man top to bottom this was just a great win for boston Lou touched on it, but defensively, two things I noticed. First of all, every time Kyrie Irving would go to the bench and would check back in, there was no dialogue between Missoula and Drew Holiday. Kyrie goes to check in, Drew Holiday goes to check I in. Love so that. they matched minutes, which was unbelievable, and I love that. Drew Holiday was physical with them. How, the how irritating if you're Kyrie. Oh my God, it's like you can't shake this guy. <laughs> <clears throat> and what made Dallas successful was the lob that they can give Lively, right. that they can give Gaffer. They were even fouling on the lobs just to make a point. That's not happening in this game. Yeah, they literally, they, they would take away corner threes and they took away a lob. You can tell that was an emphasis leading up to this game because they wouldn't do that. You're right, Przingis would literally back up and just foul Lively. Lively, you could tell he had a little nerves last night. He couldn't, nice. he couldn't catch Good. the ball. Um, and then Jalen Brown, he really took on the ownership of full court pressing Luka. He plucked him twice for fast break dunks. He's just, when he doesn't have the ball, he's literally bodying him. He's being physical with him. So he took the ownership of this is my matchup. I'm gonna, I'm gonna handle him. Drew, you take Kyrie and let the chips fall as they may. And they really locked in and it, and it paid off because this was a hell of a performance on both sides of the ball. And, and we spoke about it yesterday. 
they have so many guys that can play one on one defense. We don't have to run junk defenses. We don't have to run two guys at Luka. We don't have to run two no. guys at Kyrie. We don't have to trap. We're just going to switch and we're going to sit down and we're going to guard and we like our chances with that. And they were successful with it. Guys, I think Boston could win this whole thing. Oh, sh stop. <laughs> I really think it could happen. Oh, uh, Shams, <laughs> you were there. Such a difference in the For one game, we're like, Boston <laughs> for the sweep. <laughs> so I know it feels like a sweep. <laughs> when, it, uh, when it looks like this, it's, it's I mean, it's hard not to say, to say that. But yeah. I, I, what was it like in the building? Obviously, we, you know, we get to see Donnie Wahlberg on our TV, but you were there in person. Was it crazy? Michelle, you need to come out here and just get <laughs> as raucous as some of these fans. This is the second year I've covered the finals in Boston. I did in 2022 and this year as well. And the fans are, are just nuts. I mean, <laughs> the, the energy that they bring, I don't know if you can see it on television, but the energy that they bring, you have to give them a lot of credit. It was, it was, it was really wild in 2022. And even this year, the energy that they have for their team. But you saw the moment Christos Porzingis got in the game, the boost that he gave the crowd, the boost he gave the Celtics. Talk about the mid-post pick and pop defending at the rim, uh, dribble handoffs, the way he's able to be so versatile. This is someone who I think in New York, he was a star in Dallas. Obviously, he went through a lot of ups, a lot of downs. And then in Washington, he found himself, got stronger. Um, and he found his stride, even though that was a bad Wizards mm -hmm. team or a Wizards team that didn't live up to expectations. You saw him make a lot of strides. And he's only just shot out even more here in Boston. And this is five and a half, six weeks after that gruesome cap injury and non contact cap injury that he had he rehabs it and he had two very important five on five scrimmages over the last several days he had two in, in the span of three days and i'm told in one of them he even rolled his ankle but he shook that off he got right to it and you saw the impact that he had on that game he's obviously an x factor for the celtics team he's a reason why they're so different <clears throat> this year compared to years past uh dallas has lost three or four game ones now i think that they they, they did find something in that third quarter that they can bottle up i don't think kyrie Irving's is going to score 12 points and, sh and, and shoot that bad again but uh for for chris that's in the celtics that game was big for him and getting his confidence in that moment and, and this is why people know and value kp on this team because when you play a team like dallas and they have bigs like gafford and lively he's too much of a guard where you can see he fakes dribble handoffs he gets the rim he's too quick and then when they do switch because they left them no choice they have the josh greens the derrick jones and these shots he's hitting they're not easy it's he's got a t real talent where he literally can just Put, keep the ball up like Dirk and just shoot over like a top which is being physical and these are not easy looks and the fact that he has no legs he hasn't played in such a long time and he came out here and and, and had this type of performance was really shocking it, it, it you have to attribute his work that he didn't just sit around he stayed in shape he got his reps up he followed the offense he didn't do anything outside of the offense every time he got this mismatch he exposed it and that's why he is a huge x factor for them because his, his versatility offensively is is everything they need. It's too big for a small guy to guard him, and he's too quick and guard like for a big to guard him. So it really is a mismatch nightmare for them. I mean, 38 days he missed. It's a long time. He's an actual, literal X factor because you didn't know what to expect. <clears throat> and showed no rust. None, right? Lou, I, I was like, oh, let's just see what he looks like when he comes. Nothing. It's a matchup problem. No matter who they switched on him, he was just shooting over guys. You know, he's, he's seven feet, can shoot the basketball, can put it on the ground. And it just looked easy to him. He had fresh legs. You could tell he was motivated. He was excited. And, and you know, we're, we're using the word X Factor. He came off the bench last night. And one of the things I recognize, when he, when he plays this well, you can put Jason Tatum on the bench and you can rest him for extended periods of time. Jason Tatum goes out. Now Jalen Brown comes back in. And Porzingis is that, that guy that can kind of anchor everything and be that in-between and allowing these guys to get, to get breathers. I thought that was really important last night. But listen. Whatever shot that he wanted, <laughs> wherever he wanted to go, there was no one on the Dallas Mavericks that can guard him. That's going to be a problem. You know, yesterday I said one of the more important guys is going to be Drew Holiday because of what he brings defensively. On the offensive end, they're going to have to figure out what Man. to do with Porzingis, so this is going to be a quick series. It, I really think Boston could win. I, I'm, not, I'm not even just saying that. Um, Joe Mazzulla said before this one, <laughs> I, hate it. I hate it so much. Uh, he said that Porzingis has a zero minutes restriction, Shams. Uh, do we think he is starting? the next one or are they gonna keep it like it is I mean there's nothing that went wrong right so I think there's a lot of good chemistry that they built through that Eastern Conference playoff run with That's Al that. Horford at center especially the time that Chris Alphazingas missed I think it was genius really bringing him off the bench letting him see <coughs> as guys that said we, he was literally an x-factor because we didn't know what shape he'd be in how he'd perform and and really the Celtics knew about four or five days ago that he would be hundred percent ready for the game even though he had that practice issue they knew he'd be ready 
but they just didn't know the moment. It's the finals. Hasn't played in five and a half weeks. Um, but he really showed no no rust. I mean, 16, 11, and 5 for Jason Tatum, 22 for Jalen Brown. This is a team that had, what, five, six players in double figures. There's going to be an MVP if the Celtics win, obviously. But to me, the team, it, it, there's got to be some kind of a team recognition here if we can. But um, they, they, their, their team is just so well-rounded to me. What a luxury also to have team the oldest MVP. guy in this series, Al Horford, just plug in in the starting lineup, contribute, defend, switch, you know, guard pick and rolls, give you 10, 7, and 3, knock down threes. Boston Celtics had seven guys with two plus threes. Like, uh, it's, uh, Ooh, that's you get, a fun one. When you're getting that much, you know, production, that balance, you can't stop everything. You got ISO guys. You got when they draw two on the ball and you're knocking, they're kicking it out. Everyone can hit threes on this team. And Pritchard wasn't even one of them. He was 0 for 5. So everybody at any time can shoot threes and can lace you up. So this, they're tough to guard. You can't take away everything with this team. You know what's kind of um, what's funny. We criticized this team for playing ISO basketball and the way that they play. But I recognized something last night. They don't get a lot of assist on plays, but they get a lot of hockey assists, the extra mm. pass. That's one of the things that, that Boston has done well that I, I never realized until last night. It was glaring last night that, yes, they'll make that pass, but they'll make the extra pass and put it on the floor for an even better shot mm. or even better drive. And I thought that was something that, you know, we should give them credit for. You know, the, it looks like they play a lot of iso ball, but now I'm recognizing that the hockey assist is in play. And they are really good at finding a matchup and attacking it. If it works where you get Luka in a pick and roll, they, you get on help, stick to it. They were giving Luka headaches If you night. switch on Przingis and he gets a bucket, you know what we're doing the next play? We're going right back to Przingis. So they do, they are just a machine. They, they're consistent. Everything that works, they don't shy, they don't shy away from that. Everything, they get success on this play, they run it until you stop it. And they make you stop it. They make you adjust defensively. So. I think it's a it's a, it's a beautiful offensive. <laughs> oh, you man. just follow through and see. Yeah. <laughs> My man is trying to get me water. Yeah, I'm not mature. Steve's the MVP though. today. Yeah, I'm thanks, Steve. Mature. Steve, you know what? Just bring it to me. Steve, bring water. Bring the water, right? Steve. Get some TV time. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, come on. Yeah. There we go. Friday. That's all right. Friday. Thanks, and also Chandler's Steve. dying this is over Steve. here. I got something going on God, over here. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. We appreciate it. had a spray of for that stupid If you guys would have seen him duck and jive around it. this camera. You killed it. Um, can Holy we talk Tatum for a second? Because obviously Tatum is the one that gets the, uh, the most heat, whatever. He had 16 points, 11 rebounds. But he also had six turnovers, and they still absolutely dominated. So I, I would say, Lou, he's a superstar, but man, he's in a good spot. Who cares? Right? Who cares? So the six turnovers to me was I was up 20, and I'm taking chances. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I, it was a, it was a, it, at least three possessions I saw last night. They were up 17 points and they just came down and jacked threes. Those are called heat checks. We're just trying to bury you. We're trying to put you out of your misery right now. We have a lead. We feel confident enough to keep this lead, even though it was cut at eight at one point. But even when it got cut to eight, it, it bloomed right back to 15 in a matter of seconds. You know what I mean? And so, some of those plays I felt like were in, in. Moments of the game where they were just trying to put the nail in the coffin and try to get this team out of here. But other than that, this is a great team win. I know everybody's going to make a fuss out of the six turnovers or the 16 points, but I'd rather have the 16 than the 30 with an L. Yeah, when you beat a team by 30, you get, who cares? You, you clean up some Nobody areas cares. and stuff, but that is a luxury. If you're Jason Tatum and you're Jalen Brown, this is what me and Lou always say, the grass is a greener on the other side. Yeah. You have arguably three of the best role players that fit the, that two duo in the entire world with Drew Holiday, KP, and Derek White. Those guys can take over a game. They can take over possessions. They defend. They're unselfish. They are a perfect fit for a scoring dynamic duo like Jason Tatum and Brown. So if Jason Tatum has an off night, he has turnover, who cares? Because you know what? Derek White's going to pick up his slack. Jason Jalen Brown's kind of getting exposed defensively some night. Who cares? He had the best defending guard and Drew Holiday getting his back. And you have Przingis in the paint, who last night, Przingis, he had... <coughs> however many block shots he had, but he altered like six other shots with his three block shots. So it, it's, it's so- He was altering everything. Everything, and he didn't even, that's, that's when people say, oh, it doesn't show up in the box score, and halftime is bullshit. That, this, it's true in this case. Every time you look up, you're like, oh, yep, there he is. He again. was going vertical. He even challenged Josh Green one time on the fast break where he kind of waited and tried to let him dunk on him and just beat his shit up. Like, it was <laughs> unbelievable. You know what? And Going to the NBA Finals might have been the best thing for the Boston Celtics when it comes to Przingis. 
that was the most that was the best basketball I've ever seen him play. He was motivated. He's so he happy. Had, he felt it looked like he had something to prove. Yeah. You know, when we talk about playing your former teams, it looked like he had something on his 100%. chest. And he he was excited. He was happy. He kept a smile on his face. Oh. He was just enjoying it. But the it was like maniacal at one point, like yeah, blink, like winking. winking. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm scared. Smirk and, terrified. And, 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 and you know what happened? His first possession, he got fouled and got to the free throw line. Saw those two go in, and from there it was just an onslaught of Brazingas. Yeah, we get an opportunity three, to take yeah. a deep breath, make a couple free throws, and like, okay, let me settle in. You know, the jitters of being in the NBA finals are out. I'm part yeah. of this thing now. Let's have some fun. And you know what I like too? After the game, Jalen Brown, let's not get cute. This is one game, it's first mm -hmm. to four. Four. Like we know, That's it, true. we know our, we know. Yeah, there you go. You can jump back on Dallas. Mavs are back, you baby. <laughs> this, this is no work is done. This is a great game. You know, Dallas is going to make adjustments. So let's let's not get too carried away here. Let's go handle business again in game two. You know, Luca's pissed. Uh, Drew Holiday did have some stuff to say after this one. Here he is. I think I think it helps a lot. Um, throwing different guys at him, uh, different guys that play de defense differently. Some aggressive, um, some not, but. I think uh, even our white guys guard. So uh, it, it's it's hopefully it's a challenge on them, and um, hopefully we can continue to do that. Did he say even our white guys? Yeah, I, that, that's what he said. Wait, he said what? White guys. White. That's I mean I that's love funny. That. It's hilarious. <laughs> I, it was like, oh, wait, did he say what I think he, he said? He said it with a straight face, so it kind of threw everybody. Caruso, off. Alex Caruso is kind of the only white defending guy in the league. So is that right? All right, yeah. all right. All right. That seems like a really short list. We're shooters, Michelle. So, wow. That, is that what you got from that sound? That's, yeah. that's your thought? <laughs> By the way, I didn't know he was funny like that. <laughs> it's very dry, but the delivery, though, is Yeah, he really didn't tell. even laugh after he said it. I think he was serious. <laughs> No, it's uh he's by the way, people should remain forever <clears throat> pissed at the Milwaukee Bucks for so sloppily trading him away with no stipulations in place that he <clears throat> couldn't just come right back to the a team like the Boston Celtics. Think about that. Let's go and trade an, our arguably our most valuable player to the team that we're gonna have to go through to win a championship. Forever. But you know what? I can't blame him. I can't I can't blame him. Just just looking back, if you got an opportunity at Damian Lillard and pairing him with the Greek freak and Chris Middleton, you say, you know what? I don't care where you go. I, I like my chances. Time here. will tell. And you know, for season one, they were wrong. We'll see how they respond back next year. Man, there's a, there weren't a ton of like highlights, I suppose you could say, but Jalen Brown had a dunk. Um, yeah, he had a dunk. Yeah, let's just go ahead. Mm. To do everything's calm. And by the way, this is what they do again all success all night. They put Luca in a pick and roll, they make him guard with his feet. And Luca. You, you can't let him split the pick and roll like this. You have to stay up front. And then also, the guy's got to step up down low. The bigs have to meet him out earlier, but this is nasty. And he almost got hung, by the way, right here. I mean, he's kind of like. I mean, look how many people <laughs> he, he did have to go trying. through look four many... human beings. <laughs> and this was like the body language for Dallas, too. It was just, mm. like, good God, you're down 20 already. Mm. Like, how did we mm. get here? It's not great. Luka Doncic was. Here's what I worry about, and I don't know if I'm just worrying about nothing, but he did have 30. Um, he had a season low one assist, however. I'm worried that he will be frustrated and resort back to sort of, I'm going to do everything, and that's just not going to work. Well, he should be frustrated because defensively, I think, is where the holes are. He's still, at the end of the day, he was 12 of 26. It's not, it's, it's a pretty good game. He had 30, 10, and he yeah, made he... the right pass on most plays. Guys just didn't make shots. Guys didn't convert. Lively kind of bobbled the ball a couple of times. They took away the, the, the lob. So I think, that obviously, he's got a lot of things to clean up, but the whole team, they had nine assists on 35 field goals. That, that, that's, that's not what they do offensively. That's not good. They had five assists through three quarters, which which is like the lowest of in, in like the last three or four Gross. seasons or something. So <clears throat> again, when they make shots and when PJ Washington's making shots and everyone's spacing the floor, then that allows Luca even more so to get in his bag, do what he does, get in the paint. Then it gives Kyrie Irving more space. But when they're not hitting shots, right. that just allows the defense to collapse and make those other guys beat you. And last night they didn't. Lou, I, I, I've seen, we've seen Luca do this where it just feels like he's given up on the teammates and he's going to try it. And no. if this is what they look like offensively. You get punched in the mouth, you're gonna be a little dizzy. That's just that's the nature of the beast. He got punched in his mouth early and it looked like they were just out of sorts. Man. They didn't know how to really respond. In the third quarter, they got going and you know they put a run together, but even that run, it was like, mm-mm, not enough. It's not gonna be enough. So that's what I saw out of Luca last night. And sometimes when you don't know how to respond, when you do things so well, so long, and teams take that away from you, you're like, well, what do I have left? You know, what do I have left in my bag? And Boston did a great job of just taking away everything that makes Luka Doncic so special. And he just looked out of sorts, you know, from, from time to time. But other than that, I think these guys respond. But it was fun to watch last night. They were getting there. Remember when you guys were trying to give me a hard time on the thread? 
About. And then it was an eight point game, and I was like, oh, I'm going to have the last laugh. Yeah, and then I sneeze, and it was like an 18 point game. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a right. short lived moment last night yeah. where I was like, yeah, it's happening. Um, Kyrie, of course, was going to be the talk of the town because he's returning. Uh, and he spoke afterwards on this one the environment and, and the series. You mentioned the environment. How did that either meet or kind of exceed your expectations? And how did it affect you tonight? No, I mean, it's, it's basketball at the end of the day. Um, you know, being in this environment, um, you know, I'm used to it at this point. Um, you know, early in my career, there was a, a different uh, relationship that I had with Boston, just being able to come here, be settled with a veteran group. Now I'm here as the veteran um, over the past few years, just experiencing the playoffs here, um, even regular season. It's, it's been the same thing. I thought it was going to be a little louder in here, um, but I'm expecting the same things uh, going into game two, crowd trying to get me out of my element, uh, my teammates out of my element. But again, the energy has got to be focused towards the game. It was subtle. You know what? Subtle. As, as one of the leaders of a team, I want my leader to be this centered and this poised. Even he had a timeout. Um, he did the first quarter timeout, and his answer was very similar to this. He's like, you know, they're playing well. They've been a good team all year. This is their home court. They're motivated. They're whooping us right now. We just got to be better, and we got to respond. You like that response from your, your leader. I feel like as this series go on, though, the message has to, has to get louder. You have to, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what? I'm listening, I'm getting wiser. The message has to get louder. I, I like the poise, I like that they're not overreacting to anything, but at mm. some point this has to turn into we gotta, we gotta get going, but I appreciate the fact that he was saying Why did he throw in I thought they'd be louder? <laughs> he was very organic in that, in that interview. Good job. <laughs> leave it, don't start. Leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Um, it's okay. Just but here's the thing. When you're 0 and 11, I, he did have to throw the little jab. He, it was so was subtle, louder. though. I wish he would have done that. But again, he did struggle. He did get good looks. Is he going to have 12 points probably again in the rest of the series? No. God, I hope not. He's still got to his mid-range. He's still he 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 he's going to clean those up. He's going to make those shots. Kyrie Irving. He's one of the greatest offensive players that we've ever seen. So he's going to bounce back from this. But when you are 0 and 11 versus Boston since that leaving, and the crowd shot. is on your head every time you touch the ball, it's probably not. What what I would say after a game one <laughs> ass whooping, but they're going to make adjustments. He's going to have a big game next game, and uh, it's going to be exciting. But I, I, I don't know. Was, His delivery when he said it, though, was very calm, so it's almost like it was smooth. I thought it was it's pretty loud. Smooth. I mean, they, they, every single time he touched the ball, they were like on it. him, so I don't know. Well, but he wanted more. He wants more. Uh, we got some <laughs> scoops. Shams busy doing work out there getting the scoop. So here we go. Uh, you guys know I am obsessed with the Timberwolves behind the scenes drama. And yesterday they added some pop, Shams. What's going on? Alex Rodriguez, Mark Laurie, you're right, Michelle. They did add some pop. They got $300 million of money invested into their ownership group from Michael Bloomberg, three-term New York City mayor. He's rich. And for them, as they start arbitration here soon against Glenn Taylor, this is just another person that they have, Eric Schmidt, someone else that's part of this ownership group. He's a former CEO of Google, Dang. major addition. And and the, the Timberwolves are planning, like their plans around the Timberwolves are, are, is to get a new arena, start a new arena by 2031, have it privately funded, and give Tim Connolly the resources, the ability to go into the luxury tax. That is what they are, are selling. That's what, they, huh. that's what they want to accomplish. Arbitration is going to begin soon. Alex Rodriguez, Mark Laurie, and now Michael Bloomberg against Glenn Taylor. Can I ask a dumb question? Because I know, like, Adam Silver did a State of the Union thing, and I know, you know, people are like, what happens next? And he said, once everything is in order, then they have to go before the board, the teams vote. Didn't Bloomberg and Dolan, like, once hate each other? That, that can't be enough to, to stop something down the line, can it? Like, one guy who doesn't like Michael Bloomberg? I don't know. Just me thinking well, outside. One, one vote, one vote can't stop it, but... Certainly, if there's mm -hmm. uh, half, like half the yeah, if there's if there's half the teams that don't want this no, sale to go you. through, and this is a very unorthodox sale. This is a three-year plan that they had 20, in 2021 when they agreed to it. They agreed to multiple different chunks of this team being bought. Now they have 40 percent of the team. They're trying to buy 100 percent of the team. They have 950 million dollars in escrow right now, ready to get 100 percent of the team. Now it's just on Glenn Taylor to either relent or in arbitration. For him to lose. Okay, it's, a good, it's a good time to be a billionaire and just look at the landscape really of the is. NBA and be like, you know what, Minnesota Timberwolves, they got a star in the Edwards, they're on the rise. Let me wire them $300 million today to get in on this fund. You know what, Chandler, I had a chance to be a billionaire and I thought it wasn't the right time. <laughs> yeah. And now is the right there's time. Always, to be there's always tomorrow. <laughs> there's always tomorrow. We're going to take a break here. When we come back, a super fan.
of the Knicks who had to watch that game last night. Samurai comic will be here. Oh, look at that. Hey, yes, yes, just slay. <laughs> You're slay, killing. queen. Slay. <laughs> Killed it. <laughs> Killed it. Run it back, run it back, run it up, run it back. They should make broken family style restaurants. He's teasing you, it's a comedy show. She's choking me, I'm like, tell me, I'm adopted. She's like, mm -hmm. is that one too real for the crowd? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling my comedy Wait, central I half got, hour. I, got, I love that there's just that, bits and pieces. That makeup person. I looked orange in that clip. That was terrible. Well, yeah. your makeup looks great today. Oh, yeah. thanks. Um, he's they a had comedian. a giant zit they had to cover up. Well, the that, you're not supposed to tell everyone. That's well, what the, the Celtics, makeup's for. Uh, Celtics playing well kills my spirit <laughs> and I break out. He's a comedian. He's an actor. He's a writer. Yeah. This is Sam Morell. He is here. And he's a diehard Knicks fan because even on a day when the Knicks have been on vacation for quite some time, uh, you're sporting your gear. And P.S., you know. By the way, can we stop saying Cancun on three? Every dweeb on Twitter, like. <laughs> did you see Jalen Rose's response though? What, what so did he someone say? says, "How's Cancun?" and he wrote, and he puts Monaco. And oh, it. There we go. Yes. It's really uh, dope, actually. <laughs> That's I love it. No that. one goes to Cancun anymore. Yeah, nobody. No, literally nobody. Yeah. It's they more of a Cabo thing. Thirty yeah. years. Yeah, it is hundred percent a Cabo thing. Um, you were at a bunch of games. Yeah. Fancy court side seat. You know, you and Rock, obviously. <laughs> uh, the future. It felt like this was it. Yeah, but they're they're building. They're building towards something. I mean, I've never seen injuries like that. It hurts to see injuries like that. All the guys, like if you went to see a movie and all the if like you saw Ocean's Eleven and it wasn't Clooney and it wasn't Brad Pitt and it one. wasn't yeah. Matt Damon and Don Cheadle. Shitty movie. Yeah, you'd be like, what the hell? It's Sandra Bullock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the women's Ocean's Eleven Thank movie. Thank you. I saw, I saw that. And one. it did not do well. Uh, so my point is, you know, next year you. you I think you could run it back. That's the name of the show, run it back. Well done. Mm -hmm. you, you, we looked amazing in January, 14 and two, I believe, with, with OG, Randall, those guys healthy. If we have to make a move, the one guy I think could really make a difference is Giannis, who, who deceived me. I did his benefit uh, <laughs> two years you. ago. I did his benefit. I had a great set. I, uh, I had the room. He's so innocent. Giannis and his brother. I did a Magic Johnson AIDS joke. And uh, it's a great joke. It was like how my, go my girlfriend and I were breaking up. And she was like, you're not crying during the breakup. You cried during the Magic Johnson doc. And I was like, you think you're in the same inspiration category as Magic Johnson? <laughs> he played in the All-Star game with HIV. You wouldn't sleep with me when you had a headache, you know? So I see Giannis and his brother, uh, Thanasis. They're like, oh. They're so innocent. They're yeah. like shocked, and it's killing. So after the show, Giannis comes up to me and he's like, "Are you a Bucks fan?" I was like, "Hell no, go Knicks." Yeah. And and he's like, "What right. the?" He was like, "What the hell?" I was like, "Dude, I'm a New Yorker. Come to New York." And he yeah. kind of looked at his brother and he's like, "Maybe." You never know what free agency wow, holds. It's a and then he signed with the Bucks. It's a That's scoop. a scoop. He Take that, Shams. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming for your game. For sure. No, for Shams. No, no, no. No, I know. I don't yeah. want to pile on right now. It's been a tough week. So I, Giannis, I think, could have made a big difference. But I, I love our squad. I'm okay running it back. We were never healthy, so. That's fair. Yeah. That is fair. And so, like, this season, obviously, you mentioned all the injuries, the depleted, the, they make the move for OG, which I think was fucking love. huge Brilliant. for them. But would you, as a Knicks fan, consider this a successful season? You can't say it's a success when it was a shell of our team losing in seven to the Pacers. I think we're a way better team than the Pacers. And I know you, Indiana, by the way, Indiana Twitter. But you Twitter, still got there with the injuries. Exactly. And still there. Indiana Twitter after Philly Twitter, I yeah. mean, they're nothing. Oh, Philly weak. Twitter, they're like doxing my family, <laughs> they're animals. Oh, you, yeah. know? You, don't, you, don't ha you don't know the half. Oh, <laughs> the really? Wait. You, you lose a game in uh, Philly, you literally can't go out to eat. At dude. Really? People walk up to your table like, why, like, you gotta <laughs> why are you here? Yeah, like, what are you doing? <laughs> not I forgot here. you played for Philly. Lou's played been on Philly so many teams. Eight yeah. Years. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's right. But I remember Lou, a brief stint with the Raptors, <laughs> and like, I like both you guys as players. And, <laughs> Lou just like cooked the Knicks and it was such a sad cooking because I think our lineup was like Cole Aldrich and Jason yeah. Smith and I was like, this is just not fair, you know? <laughs> but uh, Lou. my problem was I was always in the Western Conference. So when I played the Knicks, I was my one time going to New York and I was probably miserably hungover when I played. You think? I, I went to a game against you when you were on the Mavs and uh, I want to say, was it possibly, you weren't there when the day before Porzingis got traded. No, 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 that was you, before. Before. Yeah. Yeah, That's that was that crazy. was I was at yeah. that game the day before Porzingis yeah, got yeah, traded. Yeah. That was a dark because we knew something was looming because he just wasn't playing. Yeah. And then Porzingis, uh, I was talking to Steve Mills for some reason. I don't know why I was, he was just talking to me because he was like, "Oh, this guy might be important," and I was like, "Far from it. I don't know why you're talking to me." <laughs> but I was with the comedian Roy Wood, and we were just like shooting, we were just shooting uh, the stuff, and and Steve Mills starts talking to us, and I was like, "Man, dude." Uh, 
Porzingis, man, that guy's awesome. And he was like, yeah, yeah, but how about Mitchell Robinson? I was like, yeah, he's awesome too. Aww. And I'm like, but Porzingis is pretty good. And he's like, yeah, but, but you know. Yeah. So he's Mitchell Robinson, I was like, they traded him the next morning. Yeah. He knew. It's tough. Absolutely. It's tough. <laughs> so the Knicks fans, you know, did they gain any new celebrity or player enemies this season? Whether it's in who do we hate in Philly? Kevin Eubanks from the Tonight Show. I mean, like, what was that? Who, 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 who did they have? It? He was yeah. Leno's band guy. No, no, no. But like, oh, Kevin Hart's a Philly. Kevin guy. Hart. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Kevin Kevin's, Kevin's been a little busy though, so he wasn't around as much as he really as wasn't before. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to. He has to zoom in. You know, right. it's like, uh, Ke yeah, Kevin. Who's the Pacers? Who do they have? They yeah, have do like, they have a celebrity fan? They have Caitlin Clark, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Who, who yeah, the hell do the Pacers counts. have? I don't think she they counts. have. One. Uh, yeah, yeah they got Letterman probably. He's indie. Oh, Letterman. That's a big one. Yeah. But he's not. He's not going to games. No, he's not going anywhere. Sam, I want to ask. There was a major debate about Jalen Bronson possibly being the greatest Nick of all time. <laughs> Where do, you, where do you stand on that? I don't like being put in the position to not praise Jalen Brunson, but like it's disrespectful to Patrick Ewing and, and Walt lot. Frazier. It's a little early. Willis it's Reed was a league a, MVP. Yeah. Walt Frazier, 30, uh, 36 and 19 in game seven. Like, I know the league was smaller then, but you got to give those guys their props. And, and Ewing was just ridiculous. People, people I was an Allen Houston guy. You were an Allen Houston guy. I love Houston. Loved him. I love Spree. Uh, I got to sit next to Spree for a game this year, and uh, that was that was like my childhood. Just like, oh my God, I love Spree, Stark. Those are my guys growing up. How about Starks being like the AAU dad on the fucking baseball? Oh, he's like oh. a cheerleader. Oh, he's, like, he's a coach. He's like Levar Ball on the he's side. He's tapping butt. Like, Looking like he wasn't line. getting out the house much. <laughs> yeah, like he I is back him. more than ever. I, I saw more of him than like yeah. some people in the game. Sam, I liked it. is Jalen Brunson the guy that bring the Knicks? back to championship status. Damn. I think he could because, you know, look, I, I'm aware that when people who aren't Knicks fans hear me talk, they think I should be in a straight jacket. <laughs> they think I should have the Joker makeup on. Yes. But the truth is, like, Brunson is, he is a big game player. He is a guy who you could put the, the team on his back. He, uh, you, you saw that even when we got eliminated against Miami a year ago, he looked great in, in every game uh, or most games. And, and, and this year, he was run down. Clearly, something was stewing with his hand. He broke his hand in that last game, which was, by the way, that was just like, that just, was it. just kill me. Yeah. Just kill me that the that's nail. how it, but, uh, you know, yeah, I think he could be the guy. I think you've got to get him another guy. No one's doing it on their own anymore, but, uh, and I'm not saying it's on his own. we got a hell of a team. I'm just saying we need another guy who can create, and maybe Randall could be that guy next year. Maybe they make a move. I don't know, but, but Brunson, I think, <clears throat> does... He, it just feels right. He just feels like he is our savior, you know? See, to me, as good as they were, and I know we have this built-in excuse how unhealthy and injured they were, but I feel like even fully healthy this year, like, were they really going to win the champion? Like, were they going to beat Boston? Were they going to beat a healthy Milwaukee? Like, so, you know, so, like, here's where you got to realize, though, Boston wasn't healthy either. They didn't have Porzingis last year. No. That's the X factor against Dallas right now is Porzingis and like, God, how cruel is it that they got Porzingis for nothing? He was ours. You stole Porzingis from us. They, Drew Holiday stole, for nothing. Stole they him. stole him. <laughs> that that was a personal. horrible trade. By the way, going back to Porzingis, we're getting off topic here, but when they drafted him, I know he got shit on. <laughs> Did you like the pick or you knew nothing about it? I knew it? nothing. Like, yeah. So I, I wasn't one of the people booing. I mean, <laughs> Okay. That's nice. So, <laughs> Good job. Well, I think I we were the one little kid who was going <laughs> ape shit on, during the actual. Well, you can't no, boo because you, you can't boo if you have faith in the front office. And I, I have. I mean, it wasn't Leon back then, but I do have a lot of faith in Leon. But I think you really can't. Are you really going to be booing an 18-year-old? Like, what kind of monster you don't are even you? Know These are it. kids. And also, okay, who do you want? Jaleel Okafor? He's yeah. out of the league. We don't know who's going to be great. You know, that was a tricky draft. You know, Cat went one. I think D'Angelo went two. And then Jaleel. So Damn. We, the fact that we got Porzingis at four was crazy. Yeah. So yeah, after, su after Summer League, I was like, this guy's the, he's the greatest player I've ever seen. <laughs> and then, of course, we got Kevin Knox. And I was like, this guy's better than Jason Tatum. <laughs> you know? I mean, I buy all in. You know, I bought into I thought Kevin Knox was going to be nasty. He was, a, he was the youngest kid in the draft, and he was cooking in Summer League. So yeah. I'm, a, I'm a real fan. I'm watching Summer League. I'm. I'm I really, I love the Knicks, so. Yeah. What? No, no one knew. Um, so you got a special coming out. 
new one on Amazon. That's like the that's like the closest I get to feeling like a basketball player. <laughs> that, you know, I was Netflix last time. You're like a free agent. You're free like, agent. you know, uh, I never got a Chandler Parsons Amazon God, deal. Who has? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Many have tried. <laughs> Many but, have tried. But, uh, Damn it. No, yeah, new new ones on Amazon. I'm kind of pumped to mix it up. Looks this one looks really cool. I got to spend way more money on this one, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. Amazon. Comedy special, July 9th. Man, I've, awesome. I've been privy to um, hang around comedians. Some of my best friends are comedians, so I have an opportunity to see those guys when they go work out and they're working on material and they're building up to get um, to that stage where they, where they feel like they're special ready. What's the difference between your late night sets and when you're getting ready for a special? Well, late night's just like you're not yourself. You know, it's almost like, it's like, Lou, if you were playing, they're like, no crossovers tonight. And he's like, you can't do a crossover. That's like one of my best moves. They're yeah. like, well, that's, that's not allowed here. So you're doing like a Fallon set. The, sh the stuff they let you say, you're just like, man, I really got it. It's cleaner now than it was like six years ago. They're, they keep making it, you know, Conan back in the day was great because it was on TBS. Mm -hmm. So no one's watching it, it's TBS. But you're like, <laughs> man, I could say, the only note I ever <laughs> got on a Conan set was like, you can't wish cancer on someone in a joke. Interesting. Because it's on Conan's audience. And I was like, that's a fair note. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's reasonable. Fine. <laughs> that was the only Just note. you're scratching that one off, <laughs> god damn it. Meanwhile, like. My best joke. The, yeah. the, the, the jo yeah, man, that one, that was a classic. The wishing <laughs> cancer on people, that was a, that was a, that was a doozy. But uh, yeah, late nights just, you have to clean it up. But it's fun, it's something old school about late night. Like I grew up watching comics on late night, so I, I love that. I mean, L there was a stretch where Louis CK was just doing late mm -hmm. night, and every time he was on the couch, I'm like, this is like must see TV. So yeah, uh, and the special, it's mine. I can do whatever I want, so I, I love, it's way more fun to do that. Can't wait for that. So you, you, and also, you filmed your special in Boston. Yeah, what's up with that? Die Hard Nick's fans was, was, was MSG booked. For <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I played the MSG theater in November, so I couldn't. I kind of burned God. my my wad in there. And, <laughs> and I've taped specials in New York, and the problem is, you, you tape a special in New York, all your friends are bugging you in between the set. You kind of have sure. to stay kind of. You want to just be quiet, have a drink, be be chill. And Boston crowds, I love them. I mean, just because we disagree on sports teams, that's kind of, I do love that they're in, like insane fans. So uh, yeah, the Wilbur's historic, Boston crowds, I'd say like Boston, Philly, uh, it's, right? It's weird. The DC, crazy ones. Those, those like kind of, those, they're good cities, you know? So they're good cities to do, do gigs in. That, that's what I was gonna ask you. You've been tweeting, you know, Celtics hate for years. <laughs> yeah. Have, is it still, they're at the top of the list or has Philly, they ventured the chat? Like, do you, do you I just see? didn't respect how, oh. <laughs> that's <so sad. laughs> yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I do. Dear God, <laughs> Man, you really dug into the archives here. Uh, yeah, you know, Celtics, the problem with Boston, I used to do a podcast with Julian Edelman, and we just get into, you know, the, the Patriots, great wide receiver. I almost called him the great white receiver. I yeah. mean, but, Chandler uh, Woods yeah, so yeah. as well. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, yeah, we would fight about it all the time. We'd have to have, like, David Ortiz on the show, because he's Boston royalty, so it'd be like Paul Pierce, David Ortiz. I'd be like, yeah. this is miserable for me. <laughs> I just have to, like, sit yeah. through and, like, watch. Punishment? <laughs> yeah. But, uh yeah, Boston fans have been so spoiled the last 20 years. They, they, I mean, kids growing up there don't know what it's like to struggle. And losing as a fan builds character. I mean, <laughs> it really does. Because we, we're the real fans. The Knicks fans show up when the Knicks are bad. And that's, that's cool that you get to play for a team that will show up even if you're not doing well. We're, we're rooting for you. We're, we're going to bring good energy. But uh, <laughs> Boston fans piss me off for sure. And... Uh, but I, you know, like, as a city, I love Boston. How do you not like, I love, city. Uh, yeah, I like, I like walking cities, so. so. people. So we see the tweets, we hear you about, would it just pain you for them to beat the Mavs and get a championship city, or do you, you see that happening? Was, I, they're a hell of a team, man. I mean, that's the thing is, uh, it's tough, because I really like Drew, uh, Drew Holiday. I think he's a great player. He's like the type of player I love, who just brings it on both ends. Derek White's a great player. Yeah. Tatum kind of bores me, honestly. Yeah. I know he's a great player, but he's like, he's, if we're talking like tier one, He's the most boring tier one guy. I mean, he, see, he, Lou, it's not a mean thing. Yeah, I think he's a great player. Well, the other guys on tier one too are just so electric and fun and special. Like you'd rather watch Anthony Edwards than Side. Jason Tatum. Of course, Tatum. Like of course. I get but he's that. a great player. He is a great player, and and so is Brown. It sucks. They they uh, they look good as hell. They're they're probably gonna win, but you never you can't count out Dallas. Luca and Kyrie are just they're just phenomenal. I, I wouldn't count them out yet. You talked about Boston, New York, 
DC being some of your, your favorite stops, right? Yeah. But athlete, comedian, doesn't matter. We all have the cities <laughs> that we hate to go to. Chandler's a big fan of Memphis, yeah, by the way. Yeah, loves Memphis. What's oh, your, what's Memphis your is rough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A list came out yesterday. They had Afghanistan and Syria. <laughs> 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 places in Memphis. Memphis. I'll be at the Chernobyl funny bone coming up. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, Memphis is... I actually had a great show last year in Memphis. I had a great time. But yeah, it's, uh, it's not my... Some great... Great breakfast stops there too. It's not a horrible city, but Do you have a hate one though. Hate Naples, Florida stinks. Ah. These are just <laughs> those vast. fucking all those retirement homes. Reti oh, dude, I did a gig there. <laughs> I <laughs> remember at home. Oh man, no, I, not the retirement home, but it may as well have been. They're just. I remember I uh, I was arguing with a guy in the crowd. I was bombing every show, uh, <laughs> to the point that I remember the, from the Rangers, Mika Zabinajad saw me tweeting how much I hate Naples, and he DM'd me like, are you okay? And I'm like, do you know how bad it is for a professional hockey player to be like checking in? Uh, yeah, I was bombing every show. I remember at one point, I wished death on an old man in the crowd. <laughs> and, and he goes, and I said like, oh, I can't wait to get out of here in the morning. He's like, well, you're still here. And I go, yeah, well, you'll be dead soon. <laughs> and, uh, and, Sounds and, very fun. And, I love that. And at one point I heard a voice yell out, Grandpa, no. That was someone's grandpa heckling me. <laughs> and, yeah, I lost it. I, I had a breakdown. They were after five nights in that city. Yeah, it's it's Naples. terrible. I wanted to see that one. Florida. But I, yeah, there's a lot of I have a lot of hate for Naples. Yeah. In wow. Fort Myers, like there's certain parts of Florida, but then Same I love Chandler? like Tampa, my, Miami's I'm Miami crowds. I'm are from rough. Orlando, so I totally Orlando get Orlando crowds are great because yeah, they're go. like blue collar, working class, or like yeah. good crowds. Uh, but yeah, Miami sucks too. They're like, I, I always play Miami. I'll actually be there, I think, in August. It's oh, a terrible that's good. plug. That's a really good plug. Uh, <laughs> but tell they show up 30 minutes late and on Coke. They don't care about the show. They're, you know, they're the worst. Yeah, right? Do you want to plug your dates? Or just like based I'm all over. I, you know, Amazon special uh, July 9th, and I'm always on the road. So you could always, yeah, oh, look at that. Oh, wow, look at that. That was a cool one wow. yeah, that guy made. Yeah. So yeah. Who who does this? This art stuff. I can't say his Instagram handle because it's it's called Shart Salad. Sh That's Shart his handle. Salad. I was like, hey, you got to change your handle Shart if I'm going to plug wow. you. Or oh, not. Going to Amsterdam, Paris, that would be Amsterdam. sick. That's sold out, I think, yeah, actually. Wow. I can't believe I could sell tickets in Amsterdam. So that's, yeah, that's killer. Well, they're all high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't know they, they don't know they bought yeah. them. <laughs> they think it's something else. Yeah. Oh. Do you have a top five comics thing, right? Like, Are there, are there comics that you can do no wrong in your eyes? I, anytime Chris Rock's the seller, I'm really pumped because he. I like just to see his, his mind at work because he's so... Uh, his takes are so uniting and, and interesting. So, like, Rock does social commentary in a way that I feel like is not dismissive like mm. of parts. I think certain people leave out parts of the country and as an entertainer, like why are you doing that? You gotta, you gotta bring people together. Uh, so I love watching rock. David Tell just like kills me. David Tell's the silliest guy ever, you know. Uh, th those are, and then like, you know, just my buddies. And, and, C Louis C.K. when he pops into the cellar, it's pretty damn. It's Are pretty we allowed to great. like Louis C.K. yet? Yeah, yeah, I think he's okay. back. I, I never know. I don't get memos. He's back. Yeah, like, he's back. Shane Gillis, get, he kills. That's, Shane's that's, crushing. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's Shane's on shit. fire right now. Yeah, I love Shane. Let uh, me ask you. Uh, Shane is a Philly guy. Shane was texting me horrible, horrible I stuff. <laughs> Listen, I, I tuned into his new show, Tires, yeah. and it was like Valley Force, and I was like, I lived in Valley Force. <laughs> so, he's a Philly guy, so I was at Game Two when Dante hit the, the three to, to take over and Hardenstein got the block. And, uh, and he's like, they fouled him. They fouled him. Screw you. <laughs> then it got a little anti-Semitic. And I was like, damn you, Shane. Stop it. <laughs> Too when, far. When, when you see like an athlete like a Blake Griffin, who's my boy, and I've gone to some of his stand-ups, some of them have been hilarious, some of them crazy. Blake's a funny guy. Do you actually, are you like rolling your eyes like this guy sucks? Or do you actually, do you guys respect him and think like someone like that has a future in comedy? Blake is very funny. And he also has a, has a great respect for stand-ups. Up. I think if you approach anything with humility, like it's the people that go up and like don't really have a sense of the history. Right. I've heard Blake talking about like Lenny Bruce and like <laughs> yeah. Richard Pryor. He's a student of the game. So he's a student and and uh, and I, you know, I've met Blake a few times. He's he's an awesome guy and I think really this is how big a comedy fan Blake is. I remember talking with him in Montreal Comedy Festival years ago and Todd Barry, who's a friend of mine, the comedian walks by and he goes, oh my God, is that Todd Barry? And I'm like, you, all right, you're good, Blake. You're good. We get it. Oh, yeah. Now you're just showing off. Blake's legit. Sam Morrell, ladies and gentlemen. Sam, oh, that, you don't have to, they're not here. Oh, but yeah. uh, yes, thank, thank you, thank you for coming by. We'll be back with some more. Oh, Matt Ryan. There he is. He is so over us already. Matt's when like we Sam. come Matt's back. Matt's like Sam, wrap it up. <laughs> Fuck, we wait here for 12 minutes.
Pop go. in your video too. He's here, Matt Ryan with go. the Pels. Oh um, man! Did you like the fashion outfit we picked for you, or did, did you want something flashier next time? <laughs> no, I guess it was all right. I don't know why I was wearing sunglasses inside, but it's okay. Uh, it happens. And you were, and we'll never let you forget it. Um, that game last night. Let's talk about it. You played with the Celtics in 21-22. That was last time they went to the finals. Um, and last night they looked silly, dominating. Tatum and Brown. So much is talked about those two. What is it like actually playing with them? I mean, those guys are incredible. Uh, two of the best wings in the NBA, still young, uh, entering their prime. So, um, you know, if I'm Brad Stevens, I'm keeping them together for as long as possible. I think with those guys together, the East probably runs through Boston for the next, you know, six to seven years. Uh, but great guys to go to work with every day. Uh, they make it enjoyable. They make it very professional. And uh, you know when you're around them that it's going to be a, a winning environment. <clears throat> Matt, you're with the Pelicans now. You guys lost in the first round against OKC. Obviously, no Zion Williamson got injured before the playoffs even began. How tough is it being without him? And do you feel like you guys would have won that series if you guys had him in the lineup? Man, you know, I, I definitely can say that it would have been a different series. I can't guarantee you if we would have won or not. OKC was a good team. But, you know, we saw what Zion was able to do when he was fully healthy, man. He... I think he had about 45 points with a couple minutes left when we were playing the Lakers in the playing game. He was playing the best basketball that I've ever seen him play. And unfortunately, he went down with a hamstring injury and uh, it was tough for us. And, you know, obviously we had B.I. coming back off, an, off a knee injury. So, you know, I would like to say that if we were fully healthy, hell yeah, we would have beat the Thunder and made some noise in the playoffs. But, you know, things happen. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to see uh, to seeing Z and B.I. next season and, and coming back on a mission. Yeah, Matt, you, you mentioned B.I. coming back. Clearly in that series he was unhappy. Is, is that something as a team are you guys aware about and are you, are you fully expecting him to be on the Pelicans next season? You know, I, I think, you know, I, I've known B.I. for a long time, man. He, he's a baller. He wants to hoop. Uh, he got hurt actually on March 21st in Orlando. You know, he had a tough knee injury. And then on April 14th, only three weeks later, you know, it's our season finale at home against the Lakers. And you know, if we win, we're not in the play. And so he comes back, gets no ramp up time. And, you know, he's immediately thrown into like the most important games of the year. So it was a tough situation for him. And uh, but man, when he was when we were fully healthy, he was, you know, he was playing some of the, his best basketball that I've ever seen. And so, you know, maybe he was unhappy if I had a guess if I, you know, wasn't playing at 100 percent and you know, struggling against Lou Dort, one of the best on-ball defenders, I probably would have been frustrated as well. But you know, it was kind of a rallying thing, man. We all got around him, and we just say, just keep going. Uh, we know it's tough for you right now. You're not at 100%, but, you know, we're going to keep giving you the ball, keep trusting you, and just keep playing confident, man. Win or lose, keep playing your game, and, and, and we got your back. Um, and when it comes to next season, obviously, those things are out of, you know, our players' control. But I would love to play with B.I. again. I'm sure plenty of guys would. You know, he's a great <laughs> He's a great teammate to be out there with. He draws a lot of attention, which is great for shooters. And, uh, and, and he's truly one of the best wings in the NBA. Matt, this season you made your first start against the Pistons. 20 points, six for eight, shooting a three. Make your case for me. Should you be starting this year? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Lou's asking that? The sixth man of what the year the is asking hell? the starting <laughs> quest. I want to know. Um... That's up to, Don't I guess get shot now, to, brother. <laughs> Don't get shot now. I just make your case. Make your listen, case. I, listen, you know, when you're in the NBA, you're, we're all confident as hell, man. I, I think, of course, I think I can start. You know, I think I can start, play well, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make my role in the NBA whatever it is, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna treat my role like it's my prized possession and, and do it to the best I can, whether it's coming off the bench, whether it's starting, which is probably not gonna happen for a little bit, uh, but. Like you said, you know, my first start, I scored 20. Uh, beginning of the year, I was, you know, shooting the crap out of the ball. I think I was leading the league in three-point shooting before I hurt my elbow. So, you know, I'm, I'm itching to get back out there next season. Damn, Lou. Yeah. Matt, take me back <laughs> to that big shot you hit when you were with the Lakers. You weren't starting that game either, but you hit a big three to send that game into overtime. A very clutch moment. What do you remember most about that, mm. that play <clears throat> that game and making that shot. Obviously, LeBron James, you, you see Russell Westbrook right there on the bench. Uh -huh. as well. 
hell of a pass, too. Yeah, I know. I got a vivid memory of that, man. Probably my, you know, one of the coolest moments I've had playing basketball. Um, you know, at that point, we were 0-5, I'm sure, as people remember. Um, got a chance to play, you know, rotational minutes that game. Um, actually hit a few other shots that game that were actually all at the buzzer. One was first quarter, one was fourth quarter shot clock, and then this three was uh, fourth quarter buzzer. And so I remember we had a possession before this where we were down three. I wasn't in the game, and uh, Lonnie Walker actually got a look from that corner and came up short. Dyson Daniels goes down, misses two free throws. We get the ball, 1.7 left on the clock. And I'm standing on the baseline kind of staying loose, trying to stay engaged just in case my number gets called. And I remember AD was walking off the court, and he just points to the baseline, and he goes like this, like, come here. <laughs> and I just immediately knew I take off my, my shirt. I'm like, okay, we'll see what Coach Ham draws up. And I'm looking at the board, and I'm like, oh, this, uh, it's, it's for the me suspense, going to the Matt. You're, you're taking um, us to the end of the show. This is like, this is this is how this is, this is happening right now. You know, I'm, I'm checking into the game. We're 0-5. We're down three. I got LeBron, AD, Russ, uh, Dennis Schroeder. We got a lot of guys on the court. That, Crap, we're you know, going. Matt, we got to go. God. I'm sorry, this is the play, the play is for me. Oh my God. 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 Oh my God.